Welcome to ENTA's Google Hangout. We're chatting here with Lebogang Rasetsaba and Luke and Sebastian from Christian Tiger School. We're talking about the future sounds of Nzansi, which is a new documentary about the electronic underground of South Africa. Soon to be not so underground. But Lebo, do you want to take us away, take, give us some background? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um. I guess the film is about electro music in South Africa the, after 20 years, you know, just as not as 20 years of music, but 20 years within our democracy. So you just think of it as where the knife hits the point, you know, the point of incision in our history. And it's basically Spook phoned me maybe three years ago. We're both out of the country at the time. And he had got enough distance from the scene as someone who had been in it for a long time. To kind of realize that one, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of interesting things happening in the country uh, within the electronic music scene, the way in which people consume it, the way in which people share it, the way in which people make it was such an interesting story. A lot of these names were kind of enjoying a lot of I don't know excess success overseas, but not as much success locally. There was a veil of kind of mystery around who these people were, how they make their music, how they work, where they're from. And I guess maybe the film on one level is just trying to, yeah, break those barriers down. But on another level, it's just a film about South Africa using music as a vehicle to explore some of the issues within our society. I mean, that's what I really enjoyed is that, you know, it was all about the music. You heard that from the minute the credits rolled, you could hear the sounds. But what I really enjoyed was how each of the cities, you know, there were characters in themselves. They were part of the reason why these artists created what they created and, you know, produced the sounds that they did. Was this, in was this an intention when you set out, you know, to put so much, so much beautiful treatment on the cities? Mm, no, I think that, uh, you know, I think that documentaries just kind of state facts that exist. We don't create facts, you know. Durban doesn't look like, you know, it's just like the camera tells the story of Durban, it tells the story of Artridgeville, uh, it tells the story of Cape Town. Uh, the film also doesn't separate them, you know. Durban is over there, Cape Town is over there, Johannesburg is over here. So we weren't really trying to, yeah, tell or like make things up or recreate worlds. We just kind of documented things as they are, as they sit geographically on a map, thousands and thousands of years of randomness or God or whatever you believe in of how things are the way they are. We didn't like write those rules. The film didn't write those rules. That's just the way things were. Okay. And in terms of the approach to, to the shoot, how long did you, sorry, uh, I will, sorry, I've just got my, my editor and producer telling me to acknowledge the Christian Tiger School guys, who we will come to in a little bit. I haven't forgotten about you, but I just want to get a bit more background on the film. Cape Town. <laughs> so we have a bit of Cape Town and Johannesburg here, but um, before I get to you guys, I want to know how long did it take you to make this film? Almost three and years. And to put together and put out. Sorry, Lebo, uh, I didn't get that last. Uh, again? How long did it take you to three make this film? years. <laughs> Almost three years. Okay. And you mentioned that the film was going to be, was not originally going to be a film. It was going to be a series of episodes on each of the artists or kind of their particular scenes. How did it 
become a feature lead for those of you who don't know the background of the film? Mm, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I guess it became a feature length film when we realized the scale of, you know, the, uh, the characters and the story, the scale, you know, things that we didn't know going into the film, that uh, the realities that, uh, or truths that we kind of uh, were exposed to uh, in the process of making the film. Um, we, it just was too big a story to, like, have it go die on the internet as, like, a cool kind of a thing to see if you stumble on it by accident. The stories within the film warranted it being like a full-scale movie. Great. So now, you guys in Cape Town, I'm going to join you in now. So what was it like for you? Did you, when when they, when they Spoken Level came to interview, interview you, did you feel like this was going to be what it is now? How is, you know, was it just another, you know, cool interview that was going to did you guys tell your story? Yeah, um, I guess it was, it was quite like a weird setup because we were just having an interview in Volvo cafe, like on the way back to the town. And um, you know, I watched the phone a few weeks ago, like this private link, and it somehow just turned into being like way more, I don't know, like epic part of the story. Um, but the, the actual, the actual, like, the process of being interviewed and watching it, it's two completely different things. Yeah, it really turned out nice. Yeah, really amazing. And um, since, what what do you have to say about, you know, I kind of, for me, I took out of it that it's the spirit of collaboration really, you know, is throughout. And it's, you know, what they say is like moving out of your bedroom as an artist, as a musician, as a producer into kind of this now global scale. How is that? journey been for you guys? For people who don't know about how making music works. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's quite strange. I mean, especially in the case of myself, like, we, we still haven't actually, like, taken that huge step. You know, we still make all our music like in our bedroom. And um, there's no, you know, there's no, like, fancy studio there and all of that. So it's, in, in our own essence, it's like we've just been able to like make this music on quite a small scale and had the opportunity to like play it on a big scale. Um, so I guess <clears throat> it's like quite a I don't know from what I see quite a strong theme within the movie as well. Like you know some some guys from making music here aren't necessarily that popular here, but they they, they have the opportunity to go around the world and play it. Um, yeah, it's it's really just about that fact of like turning it into. It doesn't matter if you're making it in a million man, a million man studio or in your little bedroom. You know, it's like it's all relative. And level, if I can bring you back in, how did you and Spook choose your artists, or you know, how did you find the subjects of your film? Mm, a lot of it was. Um, so there's two kinds of artists. There's people that were instrumental in in the kind of development of a scene. So if we, let's let's talk about Cape Town specifically. So when you look at the Cape Town chapter, it's like Fletcher Roach, Simon, Marcus, Felix, and those people shaped that scene. Uh, you know, they were the first people to do it. And then we'd ask them. So because this film is about the future sound of Mzanzi, who, guys, who do you guys think is the future sound of Mzanzi? And they, they, Christian Tiger School was a name that kept, that kept on creeping up every single interview that we did. So interviewing these guys was a natural progression of, you know, uh, the interviews that we had done up to that point. So I guess in the trailer, Tata talks about, actually maybe it's not in the trailer, but he talks a lot about his co-conspirators, his heroes, his enemies, people that he's worked with, people that have inspired him, because he's had his own journey um, within the music, uh, with the, as a musician. So I guess um, his his kind of journey as a musician started in Cape Town. Do you know what I mean? So, so the people that he was with at the beginning of his journey were the people that he interviewed from Cape Town. In Durban, Durban is actually really funny because the people that we wanted to interview told us to get lost. Like, uh, they were just like, shut up, stop taking chances. Um, so, so if I can interrupt then, you there, why, why did they think you were taking chances? Why did they not want to participate? 
They didn't take us seriously. I mean, who are we? Think about it. Your, your name is DJ Dira. There's some guy called Spook Matambo. You've never heard of him. And he is like, friend, you are making this tour. me like, shut up. I have to go. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have. If I was Dira, I wouldn't have. I would never agree to do it either. But that actually was a nice, that was actually like a really not, a fortuitous kind of um, kind of occurrence because after that it was just like, actually, you know what, this actually helps us define the film a little bit better because we don't want to get, we don't want to muse on vestiges of the past. We want to exclusively focus on a future sound. So that then shaped the Durban chapter. We had Boom, we had OK Malum Cool Cat and that was, yeah, that was kind of a blessing. And access to the guys you did get. I mean, I think, you know, some of the people, you haven't heard their music for a while, unless it's like at your friend's party or your friend's bar or whatever. How did you find access to some of the guys who are not really touring at the moment or, you know, playing? Give me an moment? example. Like who? Okay. Like uh, who? Why do you want me to give you an example? Just because I want you to tell our audience. I've seen this film. One other person in my newsroom is who has watched this film. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to like tell people more about what's happening and like what's going on with the film. And I want you as a filmmaker to tell us this. How did how did we get access to those people? Yeah. But I mean like a lot of the people were into it. A lot of the people who do appreciate the spirit of, you know, into like just um uh, yeah, I guess maybe the thing is that the film, the way we made the film, like I said, mirrors how the musicians in the film work. So people that can clock that and kind of respect that are like, yeah, here's two people on their hustle doing their thing. Let me give them the time of day. You know what I mean? A lot of the people would love to be associated with a film like this. A lot of the people were fans of Spoke My Tambo, knew Spoke My Tambo. Um, a lot of the people in Cape Town are good friends of ours. So, I mean, it's just like, hey, man, I'm making this film. I need you to be here to do this interview. They're like, cool. Um, Nozinger, someone like Nozinger was a lot more complex, so we had to go through his management. So, his manage, so then, yeah, I guess it, it, it worked differently across different different types of artists. You know what I mean? Someone like Spork or who's uh, living in Uptridge Villa, and he's just kind of handing out making music all day, every day anyway. If we want to come out there and be like, yo, we want to interview you, we're doing this thing. And like I said, because he can recognize the spirit of, the spirit of an entrepreneurship and kind of, uh, you know, um, what I call it, like freedom and autonomy that we have in making this film. He kind of lives that and applies that in his approach to music. It is what it okay. is. There you go. That's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear about, you know, like, just as those people didn't want to be involved because they kind of didn't see you know, validity in what you two solo guys were going around and doing. Who are the guys, you know, those are the other side, the other side of the coin is those are the people who participated. Those are the people we're now seeing. So that for me was also interesting. With you guys, Luke and them, uh, Luke and Sebastian, what, what do you see as, you know, the next step for, as they say, the future sound? Like, what, what do you guys want to do? What do you see as being potentially, you know, the next edition, whether it's filmed or not, whether it's documented or not? Uh, I, I think like just a, a stronger connection um, with like the international scene and everything. I feel like um, it's already happening. I just I, I hope that grows more and there's a stronger and more frequent exchange. Like um, that is actually on our side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the alarm. That's the alarm. But I think unless they tell us to leave, let's just carry on. <laughs> okay, guys, we might have to cut this short because we don't know if this is a job or not. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Be safe. Be safe. We'll put up the link for this video later. This is the first, the whole thing. Yeah, sort it out. I don't know, they, they don't seem to be evacuating us, so <laughs> because now we're all just sitting here live. Oh, okay, they want us to carry on, so we're ignoring. If, if you see smoke in the background, then we'll cut it. <laughs> Can you guys concentrate on all of this going on in the back? I'm going to put my volume down there.
I'll put my volume down. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Okay. I think uh, I just hope there'll be like a stronger connection and I'll carry on growing. Um, because things like CTMF and just um, like you know the great okay. electronic music festival, and, like lots of the festivals, like they've just got like um, just in terms of festival wise, there's like you know they've brought down people more and. I think um, for the well, first of all, they've they're starting to see um, like that. You know, there's a serious. Issue, right? Like, always, I've been told like by so many people that um, the South African scene is the, the world's got its eyes on the scene currently, like quite a lot. And I think people are starting to realize that, that you know, you know, we're not just like a, a scene that's just like removed and has its own but like what well, we are, but like it's actually like. You know, we we got some stuff too. You know, yeah. um, we got stuff to contribute to the world, and um, I just hope it carries on growing like it like it is because I'm just really glad that we've. I don't know. I'm really um, I'm really grateful to be like part of this. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. Like so, I, I, it's just been progressing so much, and I just hope it carries on like this, and for people to just carry on be like international people to just carry on be as enthusiastic about um, our scene as. They are, because it's been very cool so far. Awesome. Thank you with us through potentially a fire alarm. Um, <laughs> be nice chatting. Um, we'll send you all the other stuff we put up soon. Thanks a lot. Okay, ciao. Cool, bye. Thanks.